Before we get into the video, this episode was sponsored by Raycon, high quality earbuds at budget prices. Raycon sent out a pair of their Everyday E25 earbuds to me. I received them in blue, but they're also available in black, red, or rose gold. Immediately, the E25 earbuds genuinely really surprised me with how good the sound quality was. I use wireless earbuds all the time and have found myself choosing my Raycons over other pairs I have more often than not due to their heavy bass, even though they cost around half the price. Raycon are offering 15% off your order if you use my link, buyraycon.com forward slash Zeltic, which is in the description below. The E25 earbuds come with all the features you'd expect from premium earbuds. A compact case, 6 hours of playtime, even this credit card style earbud size selector which I thought was a cool touch. So head over to buyraycon.com forward slash Zeltic if you're interested. How's it going and welcome back to Zelda Secrets, the series where I'll cover 5 obscure hidden details, trivia, easter eggs, glitches or whatever else from the Legend of Zelda series. In every iteration, Hyrule has an incredible amount of depth, hiding secrets and references that even avid Zelda fans might miss. So subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look at some Zelda secrets and references. The Zelda series is famous for its music. Ever since the original game in the series, where Koji Kondo composed one of the most legendary, iconic video game theme songs of all time overnight, the music of Link's adventures has remained one of the best things about the series. And one of my favourite soundtracks, despite being from a Game Boy Advance title, is that of my all-time favourite 2D Zelda, the Minish Cap which features brilliant tracks like Minish Village, Cave of Flames, or Cloud Tops. But not only are its original tracks incredible, the Minish Cap actually uses an assortment of remixes of older Zelda themes. Some of these are obvious, like the Royal Crypt theme being a remix of the original Zelda's dungeon theme, But some are more obscure, like the song which plays when Zelda is released from her stone form, being a remix of the ending theme from Zelda 2, which is fitting as both Zeldas awaken from a slumber. Not only this, but the Minish Cap's incredible mini-boss theme is actually the very same tune used as the boss theme in the Japanese release of Adventure of Link. And finally, my favourite of the bunch is the Minish Cap's Game Over theme. This might sound somewhat familiar to you, even if you can't quite place it. It's actually the theme from A Link to the Past's prologue, which plays during the intro to the game. Shortly before the events of Ocarina of Time, a thief in jet black armour entered the peaceful haven of the Kakiri Forest in an attempt to extort the fairy folk's sacred stone from their patron deity, the Great Deku Tree. He did this by infecting the patriarch of the forest with a parasite, the monstrous arachnid Goma, who gnawed at the deity's insides, eventually killing him. Signs of the curse can be seen both inside and out of the tree's colossal trunk, such as the carnivorous Deku Babas which snap at Link. These can be killed pretty easily, dropping Deku Nuts and Deku Sticks, brittle makeshift weapons which are twice as powerful as the Kakiri Sword. However, it's interesting that these sticks don't only come from Deku Babas. They're sold in some shops, including the Kakiri Shop, for 10 rupees. And we learn that these Deku sticks are actually long branches gathered from the Deku tree. So this is an interesting link. 
are Deku Babas more closely connected to the Deku tree than they seem, as their name might suggest? There's definitely something magical about the sticks, as if a butterfly lands on the tip, it'll transform into a fairy, a being closely connected to the forest. Similarly to the Deku stick, the forest dweller's gear is a set of weapons and armour made by the people of the forest. A sword, shield, spear, and bow. These wooden weapons are some of the rarer items in the game, apparently crafted by Koroks for use by Hylians. A fact which is interesting in itself, as it hints that Koroks might not have always been as elusive as they are in the current era. While during the game, Koroks can only be seen by those with a pure heart, such as Children or Link, the fact that they once made equipment for Hylians suggests that this might not have always been the case. Either way, Forest Dweller equipment was probably used for Hylians exploring the thick woodland, as the sword's purpose was to clear vines. The equipment is all made from various types of wood, though whatever wood it's made from is exceptionally sturdy, as Forest Dweller's equipment is the same durability as the forged steel weaponry used by Hylian knights, and the shield's description suggests that this hard wood grows only in the Korok Forest. Though the only unique types of tree found in the Korok Forest are the Deku Tree itself and the strange dead trees with haunting, gaping smiles on their trunks. So unless this equipment was made from extinct trees, then it was probably carved from either these eerie trunks or the Great Deku Tree itself. Environmental storytelling is something the Zelda series does exceptionally well. I've previously covered one of the best examples of this, Breath of the Wild's Guardians, the shattered hulls of many of which tell the stories of the fall of Hyrule, a century prior. However, many other games in the series tell stories in this fashion, in this silent, subtle fashion, one of my favourites being in Ocarina of Time's 3D remake. In the original, one of the more mysterious details is found near Ganon's castle. Where the Gossip Stone was seven years ago, the skull and ribcage of an unknown monster now lie, which, for whatever reason, you can hookshot onto. The 3DS version revamps this detail entirely, adding evidence of a battle. The skull and ribcage of an unknown monster tangled with the helmet and shield of a Hylian soldier. Whatever this monster was, it seems to have been slain by the soldier, with a spear through its eye, though the soldier likely perished in the struggle. The Hyrulean military's attempt to thwart Ganondorf's sudden, brutal occupation of the kingdom isn't really seen in-game, outside of a few details like the dying guard in an alley in Castletown, so seeing evidence of a soldier's battle against a monstrous foe helps paint a picture of what truly happened during Link's seven-year absence. You can't hookshot onto the skull like you can in the original, but I much prefer the added story that the 3D remake Skeleton brings. The true identity of Girahim, Demon Lord, is one of Skyward Sword's big twist reveals. While he at first appears to be a flamboyant, cocky demon, he's revealed to in fact be the spirit of Demise's Blade, a twisted, dark counterpart to the Master Sword's fee. Once the flames of Demise are once again rekindled, the King of Demons pulls forth his weapon, a colossal, angular black blade, directly from within Girahim. However, this reveal was hinted at slightly earlier, during the final battle with the Demon Lord who, when in a fury at Link interrupting his spell, casts aside all pretense of civility, revealing a form eerily similar to Fee's smooth, otherworldly appearance. This form could be considered Girahim's final form, as the spirit of the sword, and, fittingly, it's accompanied with harsh metallic sound effects when he walks, or when he's struck with the Master Sword. There's of course the obvious hint at his true purpose. Girahim refers to himself as a weapon without mercy, and a flash of the blade is seen, but there's a more subtle nod to his identity. In his final form, he uses a different text bubble to normal, a dark cloud with Hylian letters moving slowly and faintly in the background. These letters are the exact same which appear in Fee's text boxes, translating, of course, to sword over and over. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. And of course, check out Raycon if you're interested. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.